Let's see. Hello. Today's date, it's April 17th of 2019. It's uh, Wednesday. And uh, tomorrow is when the... Uh, Miller report is going to be released by, of course, we, it's going to be, you know, redacted. Uh, it's going to be released tomorrow. Be interesting to see what, how much information they, uh, they give. I've moved uh, things around here. Again, I think I just made a video a few days ago. At that time, I I can't remember how I had. <laughs> since then, I've I hooked up my uh, extra wide monitor that was that way for a few days. Then I had uh, <coughs> the 4K monitor, and I put a uh, 1080p monitor here and. <clears throat> now I've gone to the uh, 4K monitor, but I've got it in, I think I do have it in, no, I just kicked it out and I've got it into, I don't, wait a minute, let's see, I think I have it in 4K mode, display settings. No, I put it back into, uh, that's why I'm having trouble fitting things on the screen. I, maybe I should go back into 4K mode. I don't know. What I, for me, what I need is a little bigger room and about three desks set up. <laughs> go to, you know have a hardware and then go to move over to another desk to do something else and have a different configuration of hardware whatever uh, we're going to have some bad weather apparently this afternoon in the Dallas Fort Worth area or the North Texas area it's interesting I've got a, a friend been a friend for oh my god how long a long time uh, he <coughs> was a uh, he was in the Air Force as a weatherman because he went you know to college and got a degree in meteorology that that didn't sound like I said it right uh, weather stuff and then he was in the Air Force uh, during the Vietnam War as an officer and he was uh, stationed at a uh, not in Vietnam, outside of Vietnam, where they could give uh, weather information to uh, pilots that were flying, U.S. pilots that were flying into Vietnam. And then after that, he became a weather, uh, worked for the Weather Bureau. And then he uh, retired and... Uh, Started being a truck driver and things like that. Anyway, he's had an, he's had an interesting life actually. Uh, he hasn't been a weatherman for quite a few years, and uh, I got an email from him this morning, <laughs> like giving the exact you know, because that's what he did when, uh, and so he's giving an exact like I have like. Ha like our family has our own personal, you know, weatherman. He uh, uh, sent an email this morning that I don't want to show it to you because of I, cl I could redact out his email address and whatever, but that's interesting. Anyway, he's been a friend for, uh, I don't think I'm good at making friends. It's not their fault. It's I think it's my fault. Just the way I was, you know, 
two alcoholic parents, and so I didn't have friends. I, I didn't, and since I couldn't have, since I didn't want to invite friends, I didn't, you know, go to friends' houses except when I was real, you know. Well, my parents weren't alcoholics then, you know. They uh, they progressed until they were, but they both worked every day. They never missed a day's work in their life. But I don't think. But anyway, this is you know, Dick has been a uh, a good friend for a long, long time, and uh, you know, I uh, he's the only one. I never you know he's the only one that like I I've moved a whole bunch of times. I never ever ask somebody to help me move. Um, I, if my car broke down, I never, you know, if I got locked out of my car or anything that would happen, I, I would never ask anybody for help. But if there was somebody that if I needed to ask, you know, I know <clears throat> no matter what the situation, if I needed to be bailed out of jail, I could call, you know, Dick. And I think that's a real friend. I could call. I would call Dick if I had. If I was in a corner, or something, I could call Dick, and Dick would whatever was necessary. And that's that's a that's a true friend. And uh, as an example of, uh, I went to high school with two identical twins, Larry and Jerry, and we hung out together. We went to the drive-in movies together. We did stuff, but, well, as an example, when we were at going to Deal Sound Military Academy, we were waiting for the bus, uh, not a school bus, because it was a Catholic school, and we didn't have school buses. You had to take the regular bus or whatever. We were waiting at a bus stop right, right down the corner from, right on the, few hundred feet from the school and it was a in a bad neighborhood and the filling station I think that we were I was standing in the parking lot it was closed I believe I don't I think it was out of business so I was standing there with my back to the sidewalk which was quite a because you could picture a filling station maybe let me do this here picture a uh, looks like there's a delay here in the uh, I have to work on fixing that looks like I'm out of sync here okay well, I'm gonna make this short anyway or I intended to anyway I, I had my uh, I have no I never have a script or a plan I did not know I was gonna be talking about this <laughs> I just I should have a script. Anyway, I had my uh, back to the sidewalk. So, and they, my friends, were, you know, facing me, and I was clowning around, and they were facing me, and they could see the sidewalk. The uh, school down the street, public school, let out, and... Uh, Tons of those kids were coming down the, the sidewalk. Well, anyway, one of them had a broom handle or something, you know, a uh, thing. And he's on the sidewalk and swinging it around or whatever. And so then he sees me with my back turned and he starts coming across and he, you know, whispers, you know, does to my two friends, like, you know, don't say anything. And they didn't say anything. And he's coming across the, the you know, the filling station uh, parking lot there or whatever. And then he comes up and he whacked me over the head, put a bump on top of my head like that. They didn't say anything. <laughs> then years, a uh, few years later, uh, I was married. And my wife and I, we owned a tropical fish shop. And... Let's see, 
I'm trying to remember which location we were at. Oh, okay, that was our third location. So the first one was on like a little side street, but it was zoned for business right behind a police station. Then the next location we were located at was in the which was a good place in a way, the basement of a veterinarian hospital, and uh, or yeah, doctor's office, veterinarian doctor's office, you know. And then we moved to the last location was. Uh, no. Oh, anyway. It was on a main Blue Ridge, main boulevard or whatever. Anyway, um, okay, well, this is at the second location because we were moving to the third location, which was separating our business to a separate location and our living quarters to a house that we were renting in another location. Anyway, uh, the Tropical Fish Shop was open six days a week. So we're making this move, and I was uh, going to, I'm, I was doing and did do the same thing. You know, closed, the day we were closed, I was moving everything, 200 fish tanks with fish, supplies, moving everything to the fish shop, and then, of course, we didn't have much belongings to move into. I don't think it was a real problem moving to the, you know, the stuff to our house that we were renting. But I didn't ask anybody for help. Uh, I and my wife was, you know, handicapped, and uh, so I was, you know, out there you know, emptying fish tanks and uh, putting the fish in bags and in front of the shop and, you know, doing all the stuff. And uh, my two friends, Larry and Jerry, the ones that watched me get conked in the head, they just happened to be driving in the area and uh, pulled in, you know, and uh, said, oh, you know, Jim, and everything. And... Uh, I said, well, I'm pretty busy. Uh, they want, you know, what are you doing? Uh, I'm moving the fish shop down to 115th and Blue Ridge. And well, I, did, I think I didn't talk about moving the house. I'm moving the fish shop down 115th Blue Ridge. I got to get it all done today because we're opening, you know, tomorrow. Uh, you know, because we're closed one day or whatever. And they, they said, oh, okay. And I said, yeah, I'm really busy. A lot of work to do here. Okay, see you later. And they left. And, I mean, I went to school, high school with them. Uh, when one of them got married, I helped him move and gave, uh, gave him some home, uh, furnish, home furnishing stuff or whatever. And uh, they were going to, Tito Sound Military Academy with me in high school, well, high school or whatever, and then turned out they weren't Catholics, which didn't matter to me, but they were like keeping it a secret that they weren't Catholic. I, I think Tito Sound still would have taken them in, but anyway, they asked me to be their godfather and then confirm at the same time, their con and I was, whatever, but you know, I knew I couldn't call on them for any help at all, and uh uh, Dick would be, you know, like Dick would be the only uh, person I could have, you know, or would have called on or something if I was going to call for help. So uh, this is bugging me crazy. This wasn't like this before. The timing was correct. I'm not sure we'll see how this video works out. But anyway, we have a uh, storm coming. Uh, let's let me do uh, maybe there's a past future let's okay, do future here let's see what this is I'm not sure how that wonder if this is timeline or something here 
This is what it's going to do here. I don't know. Well, it can't give you a timeline very big, can it? But uh, we should have some bad weather. And I think we're going to have, seems like, uh, like I said, I'm in Fort Worth. Did I give, did I do my normal beginning? Can't remember. Surely I did. This is Jim Howard in Fort Worth, Texas. And today's date, it's uh, April 17th of 2019. And it's almost 10 a.m. Um, during World War II, I was born in, a, in, in March of... 1941, and for the United States, World War II started in December of 1941. So and my parents were out there with me. I mean, I, we were I was we were from Kansas City, Missouri, and I was born in Kansas City, Missouri. But when World War II started, my parents both went out to California and worked uh, building Liberty ships as welders. Um, so I was out there. Uh, till I was four, I think. And uh, so I remember, actually, I have very few memories, just little slices. I remember two earthquakes and remember a few other little incidents. So I've been in an earthquake. Actually, back in Kansas City, Missouri, years later, there was a earthquake that was felt that, you know, that far, uh, not from California to Kansas City, but <coughs> there was, is seismic activity in, in fact, I think the largest earthquake that the United States ever had was before uh, all there were were Indians and a few uh, hunters and trappers and people out in that area when a massive, massive earthquake hit. And they say that someday it's going to hit again and it's going to be uh, disastrous for like Nashville and Little Rock and places, you know, places like that. Uh, Kansas City, Missouri, they're, they're saying that if the big one hits, there would be structural, da you know, damage and things like that. And that Kansas City and areas like that would receive casualties from, you know, from the big. But so anyway, I have now, of course, living in Kansas City and, you know, uh, Tornado Alley, uh, all that type of stuff. I've seen tornadoes hit in the area, but I've never actually seen a tornado. And I was a weather trained of weather observer for after I was in civil defense, the ground observer corps watching for enemy aircraft. And when the Air Force did away with that, uh, then we were trained as weather observers and and being an amateur radio operator, also sky worn watching for, you know, I've never actually seen looked up and seen a tornado. Uh, but I've seen the results I've, and then too when I was working at security at Lee Summit Hospital a I thought it was a tornado that hit I was working that night and the weather bureau said that it was a microburst and I had never heard until then of a microburst now of course there are detectors at airports and places like that and that's a microburst are, you know, I'm not sure when, I wonder if, let's see, but I, I wonder if now, I wonder if it might say, if it might say like, oh, bing, microburst, let's see, I have a feeling that it's something maybe that was just a microburst is a small downdraft that moves in a way opposite of a tornado. Microbursts are found in strong thunderstorms. Within a thunderstorm, there are two types of microburst, wet microburst and dry microburst. 
they go through three stages in their life cycle, the downburst, the outburst, and the cushion stage. Maybe I should go down here to Wikipedia. Ooh, there was a Wikipedia thing that was done by the uh, history. Let's see. Well, I don't want to tie you up. Anyway, you can look it up if you're interested. Anyway, I was working security at uh, Lee Summit Hospital. And I was keeping an eye out, out, you know, for weather and what have you. And uh, the hospital at that time, they just had security on the night shift. There was no security on the day shift. I hated that. Uh, so I only worked there one year like that. I hated that. It was just, oh, that sucked. When you only, when, when they didn't have security during the daytime, you know, you came in, you didn't know what had happened. Uh, they weren't used to, you know, having security, all that kind. But anyway, so uh, I was working and keeping an eye out for weather, and I had my uh, ham radio with me, and I had it scanning on the at least Summit Police and Fire Department. And then, of course, I could also flip over to the weather, and I could also flip over to the frequency for research at the main hospital, although it would be difficult to hit them if, if the building was between, you know. But I could also flip over on, the, on that frequency, but um, which I, I don't think I ever did. They wouldn't have, at the main hospital if they... And they knew who I was. I had a radio number and everything, but they wouldn't be expecting it. I, but anyway, I was watching the weather, and it was raining really good, you know, coming down really strong. And then uh, it was around midnight or 1 or something like that because a man was coming in to pick up his wife. She was a switchboard operator and a uh, real nice lady, and he was a really nice guy. They had a little girl, real cute, that had crutches. She had, uh, oh, I just had it in my brain, now it's gone. Spina bifida. Oh, okay, I just missed. Spina bifida? Oh, man. Maybe I'm having a stroke. Uh. Anyway, uh, he came to pick up his wife. And he came in and he said, and I just checked, I was checking every, you know, going over, looking out the window. And I just looked out, you know, he said, have you seen the rain? And I said, yeah, I was just checking. He says, I've never seen anything like that. And I said, yeah, it's coming down really good. And he says, it's going sideways. And I said, what? And he said, yeah. So we went over and looked out and the rain was, rain was going sideways. And so uh, I went over to his wife because she was a switchboard operator. I said, call the house supervisor, tell her we need to go into code gray right now. And she said, okay. So she called the house supervisor, you know, the nursing supervisor, the RN or whatever. And, you know, she was on the phone, you know, with, and she said, you know, uh, Jim says we need to go into code gray right now. And then uh, switchboard operator says, uh, uh, she says for you to call the police department and ask them what to do. I said, no. Tell her we need to go into code gray. We need to go into it right now. So, the you know, so then the house supervisor said, okay. And then the switchboard operator page, you know, beep, 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 code gray. Then we started our stuff that we had to do. And uh, then on the radio, I heard the fire department, you know, uh, firemen. They, they didn't. I think there was, um, no, there would, had been no announcement of, but then I heard tornado, you know, tornado warning for Eastern Lee Summit. We were in Lee Summit. And uh, then I heard a couple of firemen, you know, popped on the radio. I guess maybe they were, uh, you know, they might have been out watching for, you know, going to stations, positions where they could see or they might have just looked out of their station or walked out the station and they, 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 on the radio, it was like, there's debris in the roadway. So then I knew, you know, 
But anyway, I thought it was a tornado. And then, of course, a day or two later, what and it did a lot of damage. It was a microburst, but it did a lot of damage because the water was going sideways and, you know, it was blowing sideways. And there were some really nice houses there. And it also was in the area where this couple that had this little girl, uh, the switchboard operator and her husband, it's in that area where they live. They had a really nice house, and that was a really nice housing area. And there was major damage done there because the water was going side and underneath the eaves in the attic, you know, you have these vents that uh, are there to let hot air out and what have you. And the water was going through there, and it was, you know, like like you turned a fire hose on or something, I guess, in those houses. Did major damage, and it was just, you know, of course, some, you know, tiles off the roof and that type of stuff. But So how did I get on that subject? There was some reason. Anyway, I don't think, I have three Panasonic cameras, and I don't think that any of them are waterproof. I think one of them is moisture resistant. You know, you, you don't want rain pouring down on it, but if it's a little humid, you're, you know, I don't have one, I don't believe. I don't, I'm sure my G, Panasonic G7 is not waterproof. Uh, I love storms. I love taking pictures of storms and video and that type of stuff. So anyway, I got a feeling today that there's going to be, uh, Dick, you know, indicated there was going to be hail, probably bad hail. And a couple years ago, I forget how long ago. Uh, this area of Fort Worth, I'm not sure if the entire area, but it was clobbered by hail and every car that was out, it, you know, it, it looked like somebody had just taken a ball peen hammer and just beat them all over. And they had out here uh, companies that came out and set up, they'd have a truck set up, you know, with a sign or something and they'd then the a business there with, that normally did something like car wash or something that had, you know, room or whatever would have a sign out, uh, you know, storm damage repair and that type of stuff. So, so people around here are pretty concerned about uh, hail damage. Um, my friend Dick. Uh, in his message, you know, said, uh, does, does your apartment complex have a storm, you know, storm shelter or whatever? You know, it doesn't. Uh, so. Anyway, I wanted to get this done because I, I sort of was also wanted to check things. Now I got to upload this video and uh, see if we've got a problem with the sinking. I'm using Manny Cam. Manny Cam? Manny Cam? I don't know. Oh, man. My mind is going. Uh, oh, tomorrow, of course, is going to be the release of, I think I mentioned that, the Mueller report. Uh, Whoops, former president of Peru shoots himself. Huh. In the neck and is in critical condition. 69 years old, was in the capital Lima of Peru and... Uh, the former president made the decision to shoot himself. Former Peruvian president Alan Garcia is reported in a... Huh.
anyway, the attorney general is going to release the uh, Mueller report tomorrow, but it, I'm I'm afraid it it's, it's such a our politics is such a mess. Uh, I think he's going to redact it as much as he can to protect, you know, protect the president or whatever. I understand you can't, re you don't, you know, you can't release everything, but I, I'm afraid that he's going because that's, you know, he put out a four-page summary, and it was clear that that was. Uh, you know, it was done what a couple weeks ago, and so that gave the president what he put out is a nothing except you know uh, he didn't even put out a full sentence from the Mueller investigation. He put out half of the sentence, and uh, so it's going to be a mess. Anyway, it's it's coming out tomorrow. I hope that. He doesn't do politics, but we know he will. I hope hope he releases. But for the last two weeks, of course, uh, President Trump has been saying, "See, it was all a witch hunt, all in a, an attempt to, you know, uh, nullify the election, and uh, it's all a, a traitorous, you know, treasonous." Uh, uh, an attempt, but it's, I've been proven innocent. I've been proven that there was no collusion and whatever. So he's had two weeks to say that, and there's, you know, a large, you know, part of the population or whatever that are going to say, well, yeah, I remember two weeks ago, you know, the president's been saying for two weeks that he was exonerated and totally innocent and and didn't do anything. So now, what's this? What's this report? That's out. Well, that's just a, you know, a democratic plot, you know. So it's going to be a mess. But that's going to be happening tomorrow. Uh, anyway, that's I'm going to end this and check the synchronization of uh, audio and work on that problem. And every time I move hardware around or do something. It doesn't seem that I have problems with the video so much. It's the audio that seems like it drives drives me crazy. I've been wanting to buy a new microphone and uh, also I'm thinking about which might solve the problem of and I gave my device away, the one that everybody, uh, that tons of people use for hooking up a uh, digital camera, like, a, like the Panasonic, and using that. And I gave that away to my daughter. But I wanted to get a different one. A different product than that one because they've got a new one out. I think uh, actually it's Microsoft, not Microsoft, it's Logitech that has it, I believe. So, anyway, I'm always messing with stuff, and that's a legitimate complaint people can have about me. I'm always trying new things, hooking stuff up, moving stuff around. So, I should get the system set up and leave it alone. But uh, that's just not me. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. That's not it. That's it.